Good afternoon and cheers, fellow knife makers. I'm out here in the garage today. It is actually Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm not working on any projects today. I'm actually just cleaning my shop, uh, doing some maintenance on some of my equipment. And I wanted to take a quick minute uh, where the holiday season is here. Uh, you might know a knife maker. You might want to get into knife making. And I'm going to show you uh, a couple things that you might want to share with your significant other uh, to help get you started in making some knives. So we're going to talk about a couple things that uh, I use uh, a lot. Some of them are pretty cheap. The most expensive is probably going to be around $150, maybe $175. Things kind of change. Uh, right now everything seems to be a little more expensive than it normally is. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Starting with number one, the Big Eraser. Uh, this is about $8 or $9 off Amazon. I'll leave links to all this stuff in the link below. What I use this for, um, well what it's made for is to clean the belts. Uh, you know, if I'm working a piece of steel or wood, uh, you know, you, you'll, you'll feel it either in the wood or you're going to get burn marks. There's going to be some sort of indicator. And, and what you're feeling there or what you're seeing is the belt is probably clogged with material. Uh, so whenever I feel that, or even just before I get started on any project, uh, most of my belts are used before I start a new project. I'll get the eraser and run it across the belt. Cleans it right up and significantly improves the lifespan of a belt. Uh, again, uh, very awesome tool. They last a long time. I have had this for a year, and um, I mean you can see it is not. Uh, it's got a lot of years left in it. Um, so that's that. The next thing we're going to talk about is needle files. Uh, this particular set is a uh, Husky brand from Home Depot. I think I paid around $10 for it. I have another set from Harbor and Freight over on the wall that was about 5 or $6. Both sets work great. I use needle files so much. I've recently been doing a lot of spine designs on my knives and the, the, the needle files is exactly what I use to do it. Um, they work really good and they're, uh, you know, there's a lot of other uses for files, but uh, when I use these little needle files, it's typically for spine design. So yeah, uh, get yourself a set of needle files. Cheap, uh, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with them. The digital caliper. Uh, this thing is awesome. I use this probably every time I'm out in the shop for a lot of different things. And this particular one is uh, Husky brand. Uh, again, from Home Depot. There's a Home Depot right next to my house, so I go in there a lot. Uh, I want to say this one was around $22, uh, but there's tons of them in that price range and uh, they probably all work the same. Uh, I find this particular set to be very accurate, um, does a lot of really good work for me. And if you're getting into knife making and you don't have one of these, this is probably something you're going to want to pick up. It'll help you, I promise. And then we have some layout fluid. Uh, this is the blue layout fluid from Dichem. I got this from Amazon. They didn't have it at the local big box store. I don't remember how expensive it was, but I don't think it was anything unreasonable. This stuff lasts a long time. I've had this for probably over a year, and it's uh, it's it's probably about three quarters of the way full. Uh, I use this a lot for marking profiles on steel, uh, plunge lines, grind lines. I like to use this more than something like... Uh, a permanent marker for example because I find the layout fluid a lot easier to mark into than a permanent marker um, and I think the cleanup's quite a bit easier um, at least cleaning it off the steel than it is with permanent marker uh, your clothes not so much but uh, get yourself some layout fluid you won't be disappointed and uh, next we'll have uh, an infrared thermometer uh, this one I got from Harbor Freight and I want to say it was around the $20 price range. And uh, even between Harbor Freight and a lot of the local uh, box stores, you can find several of, uh, this brand is Ames, but there's a lot of equivalents around that $20 to $30 price point. I find it pretty accurate. What I use this for is uh, the heat treatment process. I heat up my oil uh, to usually around 120 degrees every time to make sure I have a consistent heat treat. And this is the tool I use to check my oil temperature. Um, it works really good, no issues, and uh, my heat treats are going well. So if you don't have one of these, uh, go ahead and pick one up. It's a lot easier than using a, a thermometer that you stick down into the oil. Uh, it's quick, easy, pretty inexpensive. If you or the knife maker you know doesn't have one of these, I promise you, they will like it. One, two, three blocks. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on these. I just did a video on these just uh, last week or the week before. Um, these are awesome. I use these all over this shop and if you check out that video you're gonna see uh, how useful these can be. 
pretty inexpensive. These are the Amazon ones. I think they cost around $20 or $30. They're very accurate, very precise. I love how heavy they are. Not the best thing to throw in your shop if you make a mistake on a blade. Don't throw these. They'll probably go through the wall. But again, uh, one, two, three blocks. Check them out. They're awesome. The next thing here is for your own personal safety. This is a RZ respirator mask. Uh, I use this all the time when I'm grinding knives. You don't want to be breathing in that metal or the handle scales. Um, you know, there can be some harmful chemicals uh, that come off of that when you're grinding on them. Um, so, you know, get a mask, wear it. I like this one a lot better than some of the other ones I have. Um, mostly because when I wear this, uh, my glasses don't fog up. I have a lot of other respirators and masks in my cupboard over there. I don't use them. I don't like them, uh, you know, and, and mostly because my glasses fog up a lot when I wear them, especially now where it's freezing cold. It's only like 32 degrees outside. Uh, luckily, the shop's warm right now, but uh, take your health seriously. You want to grind for a long time. Pick up a mask. doesn't have to be this one. Again, this one is around $35. Uh, we'll put a link in the description below. Be safe. If you know somebody that makes knives and you don't know what to get them, get them some sandpaper. Uh, the grits that you're going to want to look for is probably um, anywhere between 120 and 3000. Uh, those are pretty common grits for hand sanding knives. Just don't go super cheap. You can get really, really cheap sandpaper and the stuff is just garbage. It does work, it kind of takes a long time and you're not gonna get the best finishes with some of the more expensive sandpaper. The stuff I use is from 3M, the wet dry. I do highly recommend this stuff, it works good. It's not uh, that expensive, there's a lot, there's, there's sandpaper that's a lot more expensive than this stuff. Uh, this comes in packs of 10 and it's around $7, six or $7. Um, sometimes cheaper, it just depends, but you know, if you, if you know a knife maker, you're making knives, get them some sandpaper for Christmas. <laughs> we go through this stuff, uh, quickly. The file guide. <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, this particular one is from Texas Knife Makers. It's a little more expensive. Uh, that's a lot more expensive than the things we've already talked about. These come in around $130. I think that's about what I paid for it at the time. Um, it's the, it is the more expensive one because it has the carbide inserts, which for me personally are worth it. Uh, for example, like I said, I've had this for a year-ish, maybe. Grinded a lot of knives. I've ran the, the belts into this so many times, the files, and there's no signs of wear, uh, where, where the carbide inserts are at all. I love the consistency I'm able to get with my plunge lines. You know, uh, just uh, perfect plunge lines every time because of this thing. It's a lot easier than just doing it by eye or trying to make sure you're on the mark that you scribed into the blade. I also use these a lot when I'm doing spine designs in my knives. Uh, I, I use these a lot in conjunction with the micro files to put a, a, a design on a spine. Very, very cool tool. Um, expensive, but worth it. The bevel jig. The last thing we're going to talk about here, and, uh, this is, uh, again, much like the file guide, it is a, a little more expensive than some of the other things we talked about. This particular one is from Origin Blade Makers. Blade Makers? Origin Blade Maker. Uh, it's not. There's no S on the end. Um, I paid probably, I, I want to say this was about the same as the file guide. It was probably right around 130 maybe $150 um, at the time I got it. And I remember when I finally decided I wanted to buy one of these, they were hard to find. I had to wait for quite a while before this was available. There are other makers that make these. Um, I don't use this as much anymore. I, I got this actually before I got the file guide um, and it did really help give me very consistent uh, grind, grind lines on my bevels. Um, but since I've got the file guide, I've almost went away from using any sort of jig and I'm just starting to do them all freehand. But it took a while for me to get comfortable doing that and I've messed up, uh, you know, a knife or two in that learning process. But, uh, you know, once you learn how to do it, it's, it's um, I, I think, better. But I did use this for a long time. I still use it sometimes. Not so much, but uh, it, it's a pretty quick way to get a beautiful looking knife. Um, until you're more comfortable with the, the freehand stuff. Um, in fact, you can uh, attach the file guide to the blade and then attach the blade to this and get 
just perfect plunge lines. Um, it's pretty pretty neat. It is a really cool tool, though I don't use it at much anymore. Uh, I can guarantee you, if you're getting uh, if you're just getting started out with making knives, it's an expensive investment, but it's going to be something that you're going to use and appreciate. It is a pretty cool tool. In closing, I want to thank you all for watching. I hope there's been a little bit of value in some of this stuff. If uh, you don't have some of these things or you're just getting started, any of these things are going to be great to help you get grinding. Um, it's a fun hobby. Um, it's not a career for me. It's just a hobby and it's something I enjoy and I hope you enjoy it too. Um, so go ahead and share this. You know, give it to your significant other. Um, you wouldn't be disappointed to get any of these things underneath the Christmas tree in your stocking. Uh, I don't know, wherever you're going to get it. Um, I'll try and find links for most of this stuff and put it in the description, in the description below and, uh, grind on. We'll see you next time.